Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host Colin McEwen. Today's a really exciting day for me because this is going to be the first time I've ever fly fished for cutthroat trout. Right now I'm in Cranbrook or just outside of Cranbrook, British Columbia on the St. Mary's River. I'm here with Jerry, a Rocky Mountain angler, and Jerry and his friend Larry are going to take me down the river. We're going to do some dry fly fishing for cutthroat. It's about middle of September and we're going to be talking throughout the show about matching the hatch, how important that is. We're going to be looking for specific types of hatches that will be going on today and trying to match them. PMDs, caddis, etc. It's going to be a very technical show. It's going to be really interesting. I know you're going to enjoy it. Stay with us. River and the surrounding topography are incredibly beautiful. This is one of those locations where the fishing experience is competing with the thrill of being in a wondrous natural environment. The best way to fly fish at St. Mary's is by boat, and Jerry's inflatable craft are ideal for the conditions we are facing today. The well, St. Mary's River is a pretty typical freestone Rocky Mountain River that it flows from the Purcell Mountain Range down into the Kootenai River system. The Kootenai River system eventually ends up as part of the Columbia River system. Right now we're fishing in September, which is considered prime time for fly fishermen and certainly prime time for dry fly fishing. The reason for that is the water's a little bit lower, the fish are a little more concentrated, and the water temperature is closer to 55 degrees, which is the optimum trout water temperature. Well, dry fly fishing is really at the top of the ladder for fly fishermen and fly fishing purists. Uh, the St. Mary's River is full of wild cutthroat. There aren't any uh, stocked fish here, so all the fish that we see in this river are wild. And wild fish generally go after top water and dry flies a lot more readily than, uh, than hatchery fish do, or, or lake fish for that matter. So this is about two to three feet crystal clear water. You're saying they're not that spooky relative to, say, brown trout? No. We don't have to worry about spooking them too much. I mean, if we splash them with the oar pretty hard or we stomp in the water or something like that if we're fishing from shore, we can spook them off. But generally speaking, they're pretty tolerant. Oh, you saw them down there. Okay, try some couple casts upstream. And okay. Let me just down. go to this one right here. Just rose. Oh, did you see one come up? Yeah, right over there. Okay. I saw a pair of lips come up. Uh, Right there. There he is again. Cast upstream of him about 10 or 12 feet and float it down to him. Give a good long look at it. Okay. Let me just get a little more line out. Right there. Come on. Right there. Right there. Got him. Got him. Woo! Played it just right. It's nice when they show you where they are. That's what makes it easy for us. <laughs> okay. We use the uh, single barbless hooks in mm -hmm. British Columbia and all the rivers. And this is a fly fishing only river. So we don't use, we don't necessarily use a net very often. You'll be able to uh, release that fish yeah. real easy. And I don't think you'll need the net. No, I'll just bring him up here in the bow and I'll let him go. 
This is my first cutthroat. That's your first cutthroat, but aren't you supposed to kiss it or something? Isn't that a tradition? No, I don't kiss fish. No, no, that's a Western Canadian tradition. You don't, you don't appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, it's okay, it's okay. All right, let's see the colors. There you go. Uh. Congratulations on the first cutty. Well, the gel care caddis is one of the most versatile dry flies on any fish, on any water. Well, it's funny, a lot of people think the Adams, I mean, it's a very popular fly, but I have found the same. The elk hair caddis seems to work everywhere and at all times of the year. That and some of the blueing olive patterns I've had a lot of luck with. The guides say that that's the elk hair caddis is a guide's best friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the elk hair caddis has saved lots of trips and, like they say, grown lots of tips. <laughs> Make sure nobody's home. Try a cast where you flop it. See that cast? Okay, on you the want water? to smack it? Yeah. Smack it in there pretty hard. Like Make that? it look like it fell right out of the tree. There. Got yeah. him. You called that one right. Do you understand what I mean by flopping it down there? Because if yeah. you give it a normal, good presentation where it floats down real nice, it doesn't look like something dropping out of the tree. Yeah. I understand. And these insects are cold like this time of day. They haven't got warmed up. They're down, they don't fly off right away. They kind of fall, flop in the water, and dance around until they get warmed up and dried off. This, this fish That's has got fish. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got uh, some strength to him. I'll tell you what, why don't, when you get him closer to the boat, why don't you dig out the net? Okay. Because we want a real safe, comfortable release. And I'll, you hand the net to me. There you go. Okay, I'll bring his head up. Perfect. I'm going to release him on the other side. What a beautiful fish. Strong, healthy. That was what was needed, just to make them look up. It makes sense what I'm saying, like they're, they're looking up for something to fall down. They, they know the difference between a piece of bark and a piece of leaf. Yeah. Because they're, they're focused on the caddis. That fish might eat caddis like that all day long, all summer long. Mm -hmm. So he might be zeroed in. So if you threw a PMD down there, he might buy it, but he's looking for caddis flies. That's what we show him. I've got to admit, this is one of my favorite types of fishing, dry fly. And it's such a visual thing. Yeah, dry fly fishing is worth it. That's the peak of fly fishing for most people. Dry fly or top water fishing for trout. And everything else after that kind of falls into second or third place. Saltwater fly fishing is great, but it's not as affordable. This is the kind of thing that most people can do in most areas in North America. But you can't beat the uh, take of an aggressive trout on a dry fly. Later on in the afternoon, when we're throwing some larger tractor patterns and some grasshoppers and stuff, we get real violent strikes. That's a lot of fun. Now, is that because the fish are racing each other to get up there at the fly? Yeah, and they're feeling pretty good and they got some energy. Um, it's worth the effort on a big fly. Mm -hmm. For the fish to expend a lot of energy to, to get the fly, it's worth it because they're going to get a lot of protein, a big mouthful. Mm -hmm. Okay, your same thing coming up down here. Another fallen tree. See it down there? Yeah. Just put it in tight here to see if anybody comes up. Okay, get as close as you dare in there. Perfect. That's great.
Okay, and that little foam line that's right off the end of that tree. Okay. Yeah. See if you can't get one hanging in there. Well, cutthroat trout are opportunists at best, and what I mean by that is they'll lie in, in holding areas and deep, cool, uh, well oxygenated water and in feeding lanes, waiting for whatever happens to come by, and and that's why we call them opportunists. Where we have to, as fly fishermen and dry fly fishermen especially, we have to be in the same ballpark as the fish are. If the fish are looking for caddisflies underneath branches and underneath overhanging trees, then that's pretty much what we should be throwing them. Uh, PMDs, pale morning duns, is a good place to start in the Rocky Mountains for dry fly fishing if you're starting at uh, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning like we did today because that's a pretty common fly to see early in the morning. It's also common for these uh, mountain streams to have caddisflies available to the trout as a an actual trout food in the morning, even though a caddisfly is more often seen in the afternoon and the evening. But the caddisflies that we see before lunch here in these mountain streams come from the caddisfly hatch in the evening before. And the caddisfly go into the trees and the branches to spend the night there. And then in the morning, when they warm up and the sun warms up the branches, the bugs fall out of the trees, and that's what makes them opportunity for the trout. I'm going to hold the boat back a bit. I want you to try and stick in that foam Get a good long drift, yeah, just like that. That's good. Now we can expect to strike along the face of this log, and you're gonna have to keep that fly as close to that log as you can. As close as you can. Just hold it there, I'll run the boat through. You just hold it, don't mend it anymore. Oh. Ah. Okay, go back and try it again. He's still there. There, got him. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, I'm going to pull you over to the shore again, so hold yeah. that rod straight up yeah. and spool up that line at your feet. You just kind of hold in there. Yeah. It's a nice fish. Oh. Okay, don't arm strong him too nope. much. No, no, it won't. If he wants to run, let him run. He's a big fish. He's not such a violent fight because he's in deeper water. He doesn't feel quite as threatened by the shallow stuff. Come on, buddy. Okay, I'll bring his head up. You ready? Yeah. Look, got him. Outstanding. Well, that wasn't the smoothest uh, release. <laughs> well, the important thing is we got the fish back in the water quickly and keep the handling down to a minimum. Well, that humpy's been a pretty successful fly for you the last 15 minutes, hasn't it? It has, hasn't it? Yeah. And why is it successful? I mean, what well, is it that high, it's... it's a high profile uh, fly that floats really high. It's about the same size as some of the mayflies that we see this morning. And it also can imitate a caddis fly in a pinch mm -hmm. because of its body shape. And cutthroats are suckers for high-floating dry flies. When you give them a nice natural drift like you did along that log, you got two strikes along that log there because yeah. you kept a nice natural drift. The fly was floating high, and the cutthroat just can't resist it. Yeah, that's I'm standing in some slower water and I'm trying to fish the feeding lane about 30 or 40 feet ahead of me and it's faster water. That means I got to throw in a men's cast, so I'll show you that. And as well, I have to throw in a couple of upstream men's to try and keep that fly on a long, natural, drag-free drift. That's the way the cutthroat like it. On a men's cast, you try and hold the line up 
and allow the fly to hit the water first, the theory is that the fly go down ahead of the fly line, and it gives it a longer natural drag-free drift. If you can get away with it, throw an upstream mend in, and that just extends the drift of the fly. Some places where we have different currents of water, we might have to throw in a downstream mend, which is the same thing, but just in reverse. Got a feeding fish real close to the bank, underneath a bush. I don't know if he's feeding on uh, caddisflies falling out of the bush, or if he's feeding on mahogany duns. From this far away, I can't see. There he is. I'm not so sure that was the fly he was looking for, but after the third pass, he just couldn't resist it. Not the biggest fish in the river, but he's aggressive, full of life. Don't worry, little brother, we're going to let you go. The nice thing you know about cutthroat trout, when you turn them upside down, they go to sleep. Barbless hooks come out real easy. I'm not going to turn them over and get them all worked up. We always wet our hands before we handle a fish. The fish's skin is living tissue and we don't want to harm them. I'm sure they get their name, cutthroat. Slashes underneath their throat, black spot. They don't have the kind of colorations that uh, brook trout or rainbow do. There you go, buddy. The parachute fly is an easy fly for us to see. We're casting into the banks and the shadows, and we're fishing underneath these overhanging branches and in these bushes. And in those shadows, the little parachute post is easy for us to see, and we can react to it and we can cast it. The fish can't see the parachute post anyway, so they don't. Matter. It doesn't matter to them. We've got several different mayflies that can come off in September, from blue wing olives, big blue wing olives that are actually more brown and gray than they are blue, right to uh, dark brown mahogany flies. So a parachute Adams tied traditionally, which is a gray body and a gray and brown hackle mix, kind of covers both spaces. We see a lot of size 16 and size 14 natural insects. We always try and bump up the size of our fly. If we are looking at a size 16 mahogany mayfly, then we'll tie on a size 14 parachute Adams or, or conventional Adams. It gives our fly the ability to stand out because it's a little bit more from the natural, it's a little bit bigger. Cutthroat don't mind that. That looks to them like uh, maybe a better meal, where that's kind of an approach you couldn't sell that to a rainbow or a brown trout. But cutthroat don't seem to mind it. Cutthroat are like any other trout. They need security and cover from predators. That is why they seek out structures such as logs, overhanging banks, fallen trees, or current breaks behind rocks. Anglers are keen to likely looking cover and focus their presentations on current seams adjacent to this cover. The setup we are using today is a weight forward four fly line joined to a tapered leader of nine to 12 feet. The tippet is usually a five X and anglers normally do not need to go any finer than that for cutthroat. For more information about today's show or about our series, please join us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. It's a nice fish. You grab the net there. Uh... The net's uh, too far away. Oh, is it? Oh. <laughs> well, Listen, thanks, Jerry. That was a good time. It sure was. And for everybody at home, if you match the hatch, just as Jerry and Larry have described today, 
Add a little bit of versatility. Try to remain flexible. You'll have a great day in the river. Fly fishing, especially for dry, flip, or dry fly fishing for these, uh, these uh, cutthroat has been just phenomenal. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more.